Okay, so I want you to, first of all, just to, to uh, you don't even have to turn there because some people have a, have a hard time uh, finding the book of Zechariah. Let me tell you always the easiest way to find the book of Zechariah. Start off at the New Testament, Matthew, and make a left. <laughs> and if you, let, if you make a left, you'll run into Malachi. And then if you'll turn one book over, next door to Malachi is Zechariah. Okay? And just, just a, two verses in the book of Zechariah, and uh, uh, we're going to actually uh, settle down in a little bit in the, uh, uh, in, in the 85th Psalm. But in the book of Zechariah, verses 2 and 3. First I'm sorry, first chapter. First chapter, verses 2 and 3. The Bible says the Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Let me stop there for just a second and say this. Uh, folks, we can, we can look back at some things that we've allowed to happen in our country pretty much over a generation. We can look back at some things and we say, well, we should have stopped that in its tracks back then. Okay? So we could say, well, God was angry at our fathers. He was angry about us allowing those things to happen. But I want us to think about right now and think about if the Lord tarries about the next generation. I don't want the next generation to look back at me and look back at us and say, God was angry with your fathers. And so that's the reason you're in this mess that you're in. Verse 3 says, Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Let me go on just a little bit. It says, do not, do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds, but they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. I want to heed him, don't you all? I want to, I want to listen to what, uh, to what he says uh, to us. Now, uh, you all, what, I think probably... You'll remember back when we first uh, started having church again after we were shut down for about for about two months, and I mentioned to you all uh, is either the is around that first Sunday or, or, or shortly thereafter. I mentioned to you uh, two guys' names, actually a third one, but the third one that I mentioned was a conversation that I had with Brian Gill uh, on the way to church one Sunday morning and talking about these two men that I'm going to mention. And that was uh, Dr. Mike Evans. And Dr. Mike Evans, is a, uh, he's an author. Uh, he is big on, on prophecy. And he's the founder of the Jerusalem Prayer Team. And Mike Evans uh, talks about uh, that back in 1986, he had breakfast at, uh, at uh, an Embassy Suites uh, hotel uh, near the, the, uh, the airport in, in uh, uh, Fort Worth, Dallas. He had, uh, uh, he had breakfast there with, with David Wilkerson. And David Wilkerson is the founder of Team Challenge. He's the founder of Times Square Church in, in New York City. And uh, David Wilkerson told him that God had laid something on his heart. And so he gave a prediction. Now to me, there's, 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 a, there's a difference in giving a prediction and saying that this is a prophecy I'm giving. He made a prediction, and I, and I believe, folks, uh, that with, that with uh, when someone is making a prediction, if they can base that on Scripture, you know, there's a lot of things that we see in Scripture, especially things that are prophetic, and we see things that the Bible teaches us that's going to happen in the future, and many times that may be a large event. You following me? But it may, there may be some things before that, that, and you know that it's scriptural because God is... He's already said that's going to happen in the future, so there can be some things happen uh, in that intermediate time, and I think many times to wake us up. Amen? So, David Wilkerson told uh, Dr. Uh, Mike Evans, he said, he said, I see uh, a plague that's going to, uh, to hit uh, America, and he said that it's going to be so bad, he said, uh, places are going to be shut down. And, uh, and he said that uh, uh, with that uh, 
uh, with that plague, he said it's going to be especially hard on New York City. Have you seen that? There's, they, they, they've had it pretty much worse than anybody. Amen. Now, I want to show you another verse in the book of Isaiah. You don't have to turn there. A short verse. I just want to read this to you. But at the same time he gave him his prediction, he also showed him this verse. And it says, The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. Does that sound familiar? It's still going on, isn't it? It's still going on today. And some people, if they had their way, they would like to shut down the whole country. <laughs> okay? And so we see all of that happening. And, and uh, uh, the, large, uh, the large degree of that is that I, and I preached on it, you know, this, this I think one of the signs of the, that the Lord is getting ready to come back. And, uh, but the short of it could be, if nothing else, the Lord is using the pandemic to get the world's attention. Earth to God. Amen? And so, with that, uh, I think, and folks, you know, we talk about it all the time. We don't know exactly when this is going to be over. About the time we think it's over, there's something else happens and all this. I don't know when it's going to be over, but like we were talking back here a while ago uh, with the youth, we know the end of the story. <laughs> Amen? We know that we win. We know we're going to go home to be with the Lord someday. We don't know when. Uh, we have some signs leading up to that time uh, when Jesus comes back. Now, uh, the, the last part of his prediction was that through this, I see the third great awakening in America. The third great awakening. A mighty movement of Almighty God in America. He said that he could see that happen. He said that back in, in 1986. And there's been a lot of things happened since 1986. Amen? A lot of, a lot of water uh, over the bridge, through the bridge, and under the bridge since back in 1986. Okay, but to me, there's a, there's a couple things I want to say that before we get to this prayer in, uh, in Psalm 85. And if you find Psalm 85, if you haven't already, we'll get there uh, in a moment. Uh, but yesterday, this, this event, uh, they titled this event, uh, in which Franklin Graham was a big promoter of that, and he did really the MC a lot of it, different prayer stops that they had. <clears throat> But uh, the, the, the return, it was a national day uh, of, uh, of prayer, uh, and even global prayer for uh, repentance, uh, and it was on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. So they had seven stops on this prayer barge. How many people have ever been on a prayer barge? Okay, we need to do that one of these days. I thought about that when I saw this yesterday. I thought, one of these days, those of us uh, that can need to probably get out and, and maybe walk the streets of Oran someday and just have a prayer walk is usually what it's called and just pray for these homes that we walk through here. And uh, so we're going to put that on that calendar uh, after maybe we get some of these difficult times. We're, we're going to try to, uh, we'll try to do that. But anyway, they kicked it off from the Lincoln uh, Memorial. And uh, really, I guess it was sort of like an invocation there as they prayed at the Lincoln Memorial. They went to the World War II uh, Memorial. And of course there they, they gave great thanks uh, for those that had sacrificed, given their lives, that we might enjoy the freedoms that we that we enjoy today, and also praying for those that are our veterans and and those that are still uh, in our services, uh, fighting to keep us free when need be, and and they prayed at the Washington Monument, and then the background being the White House, and there they prayed for uh, for everybody, not just the president and uh, and the first lady, but also the vice president and second lady, and and in Congress, uh, and. Uh, there's some things I heard later that uh, went out uh, that day that some people in Congress were already on their tweeter which, and tweeting some negative things about what was going on. God help us. Amen. And, uh, but anyway, they're praying for anybody that had anything to do in the White House or in, in, the, in, the, uh, in our government. So they're praying for them. And then I love this too because it seems like this is very much in the news today. Uh, they, they prayed in front of the National Museum of African American history and culture and uh, they I think they called on three people to pray there but there's two that I that I, that I wrote down uh, one was Martin Luther King's granddaughter uh, she prayed uh, and then also and I love this and me being a, a sports fan Daryl Strawberry I don't know Daryl Strawberry is a guy that God saved got him off of drugs and things God saved him he actually lives in St. Louis now Back during his playing days, he played for the New York Mets, and he was my enemy. <laughs> a 
because he was a good, good ball player. But anyway, praise the Lord and how touching that was to hear Daryl pray there uh, at, that, uh, at that National Museum of African American History and Culture. And then they prayed in front of the National Archives where it's there we have our Constitution, Bill of Rights, and Declaration of, in of Independence. Uh, yes, and praying they, at, the, at the U.S. Capitol. And, uh, and so, folks, all these things happening, and then that was, that was the, the first thing that I, that I, uh, that I wanted to say about, about yesterday, but that wasn't the only big event yesterday. <laughs> there was another big event uh, that took place uh, at the White House. And that was that our, our president uh, nominated a Supreme Court justice yesterday. By the way, that's when all the other negative stuff started coming about. Uh, and, and let me just say this, folks, and I, I'm going to try not to get political this, today, just any more than the, the scriptures allow us. Uh, but let me just sort of clear the air on, a, on, a, on something here. That when a, when a president, when a, when a man becomes president of the United States of America, probably, if not the greatest thing he can do, or one of the things, is appointments to the Supreme Court. Because the most any president can be in office is eight years. That's the most. Many times only four. But, so eight years maximum. But you make Supreme Court justices. <laughs> in fact, President Trump said yesterday that she may be there for 50 years. That'd make her 98. Because <laughs> she was, she's 48 now. But anyway, uh, she was appointed to the Supreme Court. And, and make no mistake, folks, the people that, that do not want to see her uh, be confirmed to the Supreme Court are people that are scared to death that something is going to be done about Roe v. Wade. That's, what, that's the underlying principle. They think that something's going to be done, that abortion uh, is something's going to be done with abortion. Let me say this. From the time I got to First Baptist Church, Oran, and through these years, you all have heard me say on many occasions, I believe, that God will not really bless America as long as we keep killing babies like we're killing them in our country. Amen? God's not going to bless us until we do something uh, about that. So, uh, something else. We think about the Supreme Court justices, those being appointed to our, to our court. There was something that happened, and probably most people would now. We know Roe v. Wade uh, uh, took place back in 1973, uh, but there's there's something else that uh, that the Supreme Court did, uh, June the 26th, 2015, and I would doubt. Uh, I had to be reminded. I probably wouldn't have gotten it either. That most people would not think about what this is. Anybody? Can anybody make a guess? Freedom to marry is what they called it. Freedom to marry. Legalizing same-sex marriage. Now folks, listen now. Though That's an abomination against God. God calls it a, an abomination. We call it an alternate lifestyle. God calls it an abomination. And God calls abortion murder. We can call it what we want to. And I want to go ahead and say this. It's, it's in some later notes that I have, but I want to go ahead and say this. When we talk about voting, whether it's the, it's, it's the Supreme Court, and with how many votes are going to be there, the 51, hopefully, that's going to be there to confirm her, or, whether, or whoever is elected president, I'm here to tell you that the more than 60 million babies that we've killed since 1973 would all vote for life. Amen? So I'm praying that you'll let them cast their vote for all for us God is a God of life, and praise the Lord, even our Sunday school lessons were about that, were about that this morning. Okay, and you might have thought, was well, he ever going to get, <laughs> is he ever going to get to the 85th Psalm, and I am right now. So in this, in this 85th Psalm, this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a prayer. Now, in your, in your Bibles, if you've got a, uh, Bible-like or similar to mine, uh, it will. You've got a, a, a heading there that says a prayer of the returned exiles to the chief musician, musician, uh, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Now, what uh, many Bible scholars will say, and I kind of fall in this camp, but it makes makes me think a little bit sometimes about how songs are written. 
Sometimes, well, Phyllis and I, were, as we were driving to church this morning, uh, we headed on the Enlightened Station, and on that Enlightened Station, they were playing some of the old hymns. And I told Phyllis, I said, you know, there's, there's, there is some good contemporary music, but you, th those old hymns, you can't, they're, they're fantastic, aren't they? The old hymns, they've got a great message in those old hymns. And so they go on for years to years. Well, this prayer here, uh, possibly taken from uh, being written uh, uh, during a time that uh, uh, the uh, God's people were coming out of exile. They've, been, they've done that at different times, amen? And so a lot of, lot of Bible scholars think, though, that this is they're coming home after the Babylonian uh, captivity. Now they're out of captivity, and they're praying uh, for revival. What I like about it, we know that God's word is alive. Amen? And, and God's word being alive, it is good for any and every age, no matter when. It never gets old. It's always alive. Right? Okay. We're just going to kind of go through this uh, this morning, this, this prayer for revival, and we'll see where God, how far he gets us and takes us. <laughs> All right? He says, Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of of David. The Lord was favorable to the nation of Israel. They were his chosen people. He gave them this land. They were in exile for a while, but they came back to that land. Now, when I think about that, I think about us as Americans. God gave us America. Amen? And I praise the Lord for the men that he inspired so many years ago that he inspired to write our Constitution, aren't you? Is I, I sometimes I see those things and and I think, isn't it amazing? Some of the things that that people are trying to debate today and trying to debunk today, those founding fathers, good night. <laughs> way back then, what they wrote way back then, we'd be in terrible shape if we couldn't turn back to those things now and say, praise the Lord, this is what it says. That, and by the way, that's what the new Supreme Court justice. Also is saying that she lives by the Constitution. Amen. All right. So would you agree with me that God has been favorable to America? Bringing us here, giving us the freedoms that we have. He says in verse 2, you have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. And then he uses, from what I understand in the Hebrew language there, that word selah means musical rest. <laughs> Here's, a, here's a, a hymn, a praise being sung. It's a prayer, but it's a musical rest. It's like, stop and look back what you just read. <laughs> Don't get past that. God has been so good to you, so good to us. Now, forgive me. Think about things that the nation of Israel did. They got so involved. They, they go into a land and they get involved in the pagan worship of other people. And you think that's terrible, but folks, look what we have done today. Look what we've done in America today. We've gotten involved with so much sin and so much iniquity. The hatred, the division that we have in our country, there's so much there. God will forgive us. Amen? And he says you've covered all their sin. I love that. Uh, God, now these people, they, they, you know, they still had the animal sacrifice that was going on uh, in the tabernacle temple and, and all of that. But we... They were looking forward to the time that God was going to take care of sin on the cross of Calvary one time and forever. And so they did that by faith. You and I, we look back on it now because it's already happened. God has forgiven us of our sin. Wow. He says in verse 3, You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. God hates sin. Amen. God hates sin. Do you think he likes to see in America what's going on today? Can't you see that he has a broken heart? When he sees the freedom that we have today, that we come here we, and we have the freedom of religion to worship as God would lead us to worship, and yet we're going through a pandemic and, and in places in our country they're shutting down churches. They're saying that it's all right to go other places, but don't go to church now. That's why, you know, folks, listen. I know there are times that we have to shut down, but I hate it. <laughs> I really do hate it. Because to me, uh, the church is a necessity. Amen? And when we look back over our history, the churches were a place that people wanted and needed to go. 
And by the way, one of the things that, uh, that David Wilkerson said uh, way back, well, in 86, part of his prediction was that uh, prayerless, listen closely now, prayerless Christians would all of a sudden start really praying and getting into God's word when these things start happening. And here we have some, some uh, state governments in our country that uh, people wanted to get back to church and worship. Heard someone say the other day, what I'm really afraid of is that during this period of time, people are going to get out of the habit. <laughs> They're going to get out of the habit of worship. Well, the devil would like nothing any better. You think he, the devil's not having a heyday when we close churches and say it's all right to go and protest wherever. I love the fact that President Trump is, is calling his rallies peaceful protests. <laughs> Amen. And it is protesting about all this stuff that's going on, all the anarchy, the burning, the looting in the streets. So they were saying, yeah, you, you brought us. And, and right now, folks, yeah, we're in, we're in bad times. If God, if we, if we repent, we return to God, he's, and, he, and he comes and gives us revival, these things, he's going he's to free us from his anger, I believe, will cease. In uh, verse 5, will you be angry with us forever? He says, will you prolong to all generations? Now, folks, we do not want to see his anger prolonged to our next generation, do we? We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that happen. I love verse 6. Say, I love Psalm 85. Say it with me. I love Psalm 85, verse 6. Oh, you do? Let's see what it says then. <laughs> Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? <laughs> I, I like to rejoice. Do you? You know, I know that sometimes us Baptists, uh, people, in fact, I've heard the statement over years that uh, when we all get to heaven, we sing that song, we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven, uh, there's going to be one area that the Pentecostals are going to take the Baptists aside and show them how to worship. <laughs> don't believe that uh, but I've, I've been I don't know, I've been accused of being Baptist have any of y'all ever been accused of being Baptist I guess one of the things that you could say is about that, well my uh, uh, my grandmother was a Pentecost preacher and I have a, a half uncle that's also a Pentecostal preacher and uh, but that's you know I, to me I think it is fantastic to think about what the Lord has done for me, and I don't deserve not one single minute ounce of his blessings that he's done for me. And when I get to thinking about that, I get to thinking about all this stuff that's going on in our world. Yeah, we don't like it, and, and people are having to stay home. There's so many things happening, and, and people are getting sick. One of these days, <laughs> hallelujah, one of these days, Jesus is going to step out, the prophet's going to sound, and I'm out of here. And you are too, if you know Jesus as personal Savior, right? That's enough to make a Baptist shout. How long has it been since you heard Baptist shout? <laughs> Phil said, I never had. Well, Phil, I'm going to give you one right now. Uh, how many people remember the Cathedral Quartet? One of the greatest quartets I ever sung. Well, every once in a while, George Ellis, the bass singer, they'd be in the middle of a, <laughs> in the middle of a song, and George would say, wait a minute, excuse me just a minute. And he'd get over here someplace, and he'd say, well, glory! <laughs> Phil, you just heard a Baptist shout. <laughs> One of the churches that I pastored, this is our second pastor, uh, I heard uh, a Baptist lady, and I don't remember what the first one was about. <laughs> and I remember one Sunday, and, and the church is shaped like a cross. Okay, a little Whitewater Baptist church out in Patton. Hey, it may feel holler, to be exact. <laughs> it's shaped like a cross. Comes in this way, goes back and then there's there's wings on the side out here for people to sit and so this lady she's in heaven now but one sunday morning i don't know she was just sitting over i started to say mind her own business but i don't, I don't know but something happened and all of a sudden Woo! she just gave out a shout and i saw a, 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 a it was this lady's daughter one sunday night when we were having services in the fellowship hall we were, we're remodeling the, that auditorium, that cross-shaped auditorium. We were having services in the fellowship hall, which was out this way, passed through this wing and out that way. <clears throat> and uh, one night, on a Sunday night, I was giving an invitation, and there was a young man 
uh, that was uh, had been Jehovah Witness. We married a Baptist woman, <laughs> member of our church. And so during the invitation, he walked down the aisle to get saved. And his aunt was playing the piano. <laughs> Joanne, fellas, you remember her? Woo! 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 Man, she just started shouting over there. Folks, there's nothing wrong with, with getting excited about the Lord. When we get revived, there's going to be some of that, I believe. Now, you know, your salvation doesn't depend on that. You know, we don't, it doesn't depend on feelings. But it's all right for the feeling. It's all right for the feeling you got in your heart to make its way to your lips. <laughs> Amen? It's all right for, to, for a, a, a Baptist or anyone else to raise their hand once in a while and praise the Lord, right? Okay, well, he says, in, in fact, here he, he talks, when you revive us again that we may rejoice, show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation, your deliverance. I will hear what the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. We need peace, amen? In our country, we need peace. But let them not turn back to folly. Don't, this, folks, we're so guilty of this. After 9-11, we experienced some revival during that period of time, didn't we? But I hate to say this, but it didn't last long. Obviously, what we see today going on, we went too many people went right back to the Father. Amen? Lord, please help us not to do this. Surely His salvation is near to those who fear Him that the glory may dwell in our land. Don't we want God's glory in our land? Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Through God's plan of salvation and redemption, He brings people to him and glorifies himself through them, through us and our lives. He says, yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. And I've, in my Bible, I've got a note right there, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I'll make your paths straight. That's what we want, don't we? They, we want that to be commonplace in our lives. Let me, let me give you these, and we're going to give God's invitation. Uh, what, would, what, does re, what would revival look like in America right now? This is, there are just about ten things I've listed. I'm just going to go through them real quick. We could turn protest to peace <laughs> through prayer. Harassment to humility. Did you see the one news clip where there was people that were dining outside? And a husband and wife is sitting there minding their own business. And some thug comes up and starts sitting down at their table and runs them off. Harasses them. And they're trying, I don't know, they didn't show the rest of them. They were trying to get help to come out. I don't know what happened with that. But we get revived, we can turn harassment to humility. Amen. Looting to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Back to what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. We can move from fear to faith, from revenge to repentance, from anger to the awesome Love of Almighty God. Fighting to forgiveness. The Holocaust of abortion to the... Boy, I love this. Now, guess this. Listen to this closely. The Holocaust of abortion to the hallelujahs from the unborn. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that gives me a Holy Ghost bump. Satan's confusion to salvation through Christ. From embracing the mess to embracing the Messiah. Stand with me, please. What's, what's your name, Bill? What are we saying? 469. Father, we pray that you'll take charge of this invitation, Lord, and help us to be humble before you. We pray in Jesus' name. Some are coming to pray. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to sing this first person and then we can do something a little bit different. 469. 